we're not going to talk about fusion imaging. Uh, uh, because when I received this assignment uh, and talk about fusion imaging, it was a great idea, and we were working on a project uh, to combine CT or MRI and you know, to make a registration and use it as a, as a, as a navigation. <clears throat> and you can see those systems available. The problem is that it's really cumbersome. And I cannot believe we will use it any time in the future. And I really cannot believe that we'll uh, do spe sp special, so, so to speak, MRIs for patients just to do facet joint injection. I just cannot see it. If you can see it, uh, but... Now, but I just want to use, and with Vincent's permission, use the topic fusion, because fusion can be different. And um, uh, the presentation is uh, on uh, Pierre Morat is my uh, great collaborator and dear friend. He is uh, a physicist uh, in um, um, uh, ultrasound lab, uh, bio lab of the University of Washington. And this topic we have been working for past uh, year and a half. And, um, it's, it's more like a basic science, so uh, if, you, if you like to get to sleep, so please, be, please uh, do it. Um, so, but I will try to present you in a more interactive way. It was, uh, you'll see some graphs and, di and diagrams, but I'll try to keep it simple, promise. So how do we do a pain diagnosis? We're kind of, diff the, it's, a, it's really difficult sometimes, because we, are, we, we find some, uh, you know, body positions or diagrams or we do some allodynia points so we know uh, distribution of uh, uh, trigger points or facet joints, but we don't really know how to do it precisely. We have questionnaires, and uh, some of them specifically for neuropathic pain, some of them are very good, such as LANS questionnaire and M-Detect. Um, we do uh, questionnaires and the physical examination, and it's lens scale and the DN4, it's a Delore something, neuropathic 4. Uh, we use imaging, MRI, and, or NMRI, or uh, um, nerve imaging, ultrasound. We do electrophysiology studies. We do skin biopsies, nerve biopsies. So we have a lot of, of tools. Uh, for example, ultrasound, this is a picture of, of a patient with ischemic uh, damage of uh, a uh, common peroneal nerve, which this is the, you know, this actual split, and, uh, and the tibial nerve is normal, and this nerve is swollen, and uh, uh, actually lost some fascicular structure. So it's nice, but uh, sometimes you cannot see so gross uh, changes of the nerve. Uh, how many of you are familiar with QST? One, two, three, four, great, five. So, for those who are not familiar, I'll explain. Uh, uh, QST, or quantitative sensory testing, is a psychophysical diagnosis, of psychophysical test. And why it's psychophysical? Because we're using physical modalities such as heat, cold, vibration, pinprick, uh, brush, to elicit responses. And, uh, and patients report. And, and because, well, we are relying on a patient uh, report, we call it psychophysical. So such as this is the... Uh, uh, thermoprobe uh, uh, Peltier mechanism with co cooling or heating applied to leg, sometimes it's, it's uh, hand, and this is the uh, uh, button to stop. It can go in basically on the thresholds or supra thresholds, so non painful stimuli versus painful stimuli, and you do some different protocols as limits and, uh, and range and, and ramp and hold, so I won't go to this issue. But there's some multiple protocols to identify thresholds, supra threshold stimulation, and also, um, and also wind up phenomenon and, and, uh, and, and that may produce some understanding of uh, neuropathic pain. And that's how it, it looks like on a computer. So this is the uh, uh, temporary sens uh, temperature sensor analyzer. We have, we, we have also uh, a pressure uh, analyzer and, uh, and vibration. So this is what I call uh, um, fusion. <laughs> because you, you take two familiar things, you combine it together, this is a fusion. So, and that's exactly what we have done with, uh, with uh, um, ultrasound. So uh, Philip will give next... Uh, uh, our so lecture about HIFO, so I'm not going to HIFO, but this is the same principle. So HIFO or ultrasound can generate focal heat and on very predetermined depths. At the same time, 
ultrasound can generate tissue displacement or acoustic force, acoustic force. And the displacement is really in microns. And, and our uh, idea was if we can use this displacement force and produce some sensations. So it was uh, not quite our idea. The idea was uh, uh, published many years ago. And so acoustic radiation force and as, as, as local palpation sounds kind of very interesting. So we kind of, you know, we, we are putting our hand, kind of virtual hand into the, into the patient body and kind of palpating with ultrasound. And the idea was if, if we do it with abnormal tissue, it can produce some other sensations. So we try to do it, and this is summary, by the way, of um, uh, uh, what's called a TAP device, transacoustic palpation, not, not transabdominal plane block. And, uh, and this is the uh, cage with, uh, with rats. So, uh, and uh, we did on inflammatory pain and neuropathy pain, and also on um, nerve injury pain. And we created injuries, and we did ob observation results. So inflammatory pain we produced by uh, injection, injection of uh, complete uh, uh, front um, uh, component. It produces very, very severe uh, inflammation of the paw, kind of whole thickness. And then we apply this device that uh, produces the, um, uh, um, in, uh, this is basically intensity and, um, and, and axial distance of uh, the produced uh, um, signal, and this is a transverse. So, and this shows you the area of, of high for application, transducer phase, and hot spot, and it basically produces some uh, uh, distances according to uh, uh, acoustic force. And this is the behavioral test as a, as a cone to a cage, and it takes some time to habituation because they really don't like gel, you know, like our models, they don't like gel. And what we, what we have seen, the uh, uh, palpation amplitude is really the, uh, uh, in a uh, longer pulse duration, it was actually all pole withdrawal. So in longer pulse, pulse duration, the red withdrawal reflex was much faster than in a short dur duration. Now, it can be also uh, uh, produced by heat, but as you, as you can see here, regardless of the duration, heat was produ uh, production of heat was not really uh, significantly different. Uh, so in any type of uh, stimulation, uh, short or long, it was fairly similar uh, pr uh, heat um, uh, um, uh, generation and not quite high. We also confirmed that uh, uh, on this model we can induce allodynia, and both in shallow and uh, and um, uh, um, and um, uh, induced tissue. So this is the uh, with the inflamed tissue on the shallow, and this is a normal. So the the response was much faster on, on inflamed tissue rather than uh, normal tissue, and it's, it basically was in in the, both in the, in the uh, shallow and the deep, which deep was a bit more uh, uh, varies with the confidence interval well, because of um, limitation of technologies. We uh, can speculate that um, um, the shallow tissue is much more um, uh, susceptible to a uh, response, and, the, and it's kind of interesting, and it definitely um, uh, understandable because this, the concentration of the uh, sensory branches, the sensory innervation of, of the shallow tissue is more and much more than, than, than deep. So we also did uh, experiments of wind-up um, and with repeated stimulation. And uh, again, it was uh, showed previously. So we did experiments on the rats with the neuropathic pain model. Some, uh, uh, we did um, uh, partial ligation. And, uh, and then we stimulated uh, with, uh, 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 both with peripheral neuropathy and the partial ligation. We found uh, the difference between uh, um, uh, uh, neurop neuropathy and sham was, uh, was actually even sham incision produced some allodynia, but, but less than uh, partial ligation. We also used different protocols. This is a brief acoustic protocol, so basically very sharp and, and, and uh, intense stimuli. And instead of that, we did uh, several five of stimuli with less um, intensity. And as you can see here, with um, uh, the intensity was much higher, and the tap produced faster uh, poor uh, um, withdrawal than uh, more uh, than one stimuli. So I will skip this one, and uh, um, this is uh, demonstrates that 
the, uh, uh, the phenomenon was actually related to repeated stimuli, like wind up, rather than pro production of heat. So we, we show that diffusely painful tissue response uh, respond favorably on IFO stimulation, not HIFO, but IFO. And uh, it was very consistent with hypothesis of uh, t temporal summation applied on, uh, uh, on rats. So this is a model of subcutaneous uh, neuropathic pain. Again, it was a partial ligation. And uh, with a neuroma formation, neuroma was two millimeters uh, uh, below the skin. And we did some tests, and it was very consistent with one fry response. And what's, what is interesting, that uh, rats that did not respond on von fry, they did not respond on IFO stimulation as well. And, and, uh, and the rats with response on von fry, that's a palpation, they responded very consistently with the uh, IFO stimulation. This is our first uh, human study. It's on Pierre, where the sensitivity was good, the specificity was not quite good, but he was nervous. And we did a, a volunteer study on, on fingertips with a, a very consistent response, uh, depends on intensity. So it was not painful, but very, very uh, discerned sens sensation. And as you can see here, the higher uh, amplitude, the more stimulation uh, uh, volunteers uh, uh, felt. Mar margin of safety we did with, with the uh, histological study. The dose required for tissue damage was 120 times higher than we, did, we applied. So this is a prototype with uh, um, the just normal ultrasound probe with a cone and filled with water. And this is the first uh, human study in, um, uh, submitted now for funding with patient with uh, uh, um, transcutaneous acoustic palpation of uh, re -innervation. So this idea, if the, if the muscle is re it will be less neuropathic pain. So just submit it now. TMR is targeted muscle innervation. So potential clinical application can be neurologic, regional anesthesia, physical therapy, and pain medicine. Now, this is regional anesthesia. So what we do, we, we put the needle and we try to do a stimulation if we cannot see the nerve. So what, it will be very nice if we can a tap device and we, we palpate the nerves inside or the structure that we think then the nerves. And with a stimulation in the motor or sensor, we can induce both, depends on the frequencies. We can do non-invasive stimulation of the nerve prior to needle placement. Um, so multiple applications here. And, um, and uh, um, the con to conclusion, the uh, inflammatory neuropathic pain of tissues more, much more sensitive for IFO stimulation. And focal source of subcutaneous pain may be located with IFO stimulation. It was reliably, uh, um, a reliable sense by human uh, subject, uh, healthy subject. And, it, and most important, it can generate temporal summation, meaning we can use it as, as a real QST test. <clears throat> 